Uh, today we will talk about cooperative games, uh, which is different from non-cooperative game and different from teams. Okay, so the idea so far in a non-cooperative game was each player will take an action and then uh, the payoff that each player get depends on the actions of all the players who are playing that particular game. Uh, in cooperative game, it's uh, also known as coalition game. And the idea here is each player will decide whether to join a group of individuals or not. And if it decides to join a group of individuals and the group is going to make some amount of money or will have to pay some cost, how do you exactly share the amount of money that the group is making or not? Okay, so it's some amount of negotiation. So there is some amount of bargaining, negotiation and so on in, in uh, cooperative games. So I want to give you uh, an engineering slash economic application. Uh, so think about transportation networks, okay? So you have bus, trains, and Uber, okay? Let's say there are three different modes of transportation. Uh, and then there are taxi drivers. Now, let's say you want to go from point A to point B, and the idea in today's world, okay, so this is, this is looking into the future, so this is not, we are not there yet. The idea is to use multi-modal transportation, transportation network, okay, so you want to go from point A to point B, this is point A, this is point B, and Uber comes, picks you up, drops you off at point C, a bus, so this is Uber, this is bus, which takes you to point D, and then this is another Uber, Lyft. I, I'm not, I don't want to make it uh, uh, an advertisement for Uber, but you can replace Uber with any taxi service, okay? A local service, a global service, or Lyft, or whatever. So this is known as multimodal transportation. Well, people are doing it already, so you have to call an Uber to go from point A to point C. Then you will take a bus, pay the bus. So first you will pay Uber, then you will pay bus, then again you will call an Uber and, and pay for the service that you are uh, taking. But the idea in multimodal transportation network is that you will, you will just, you will have an app and you will press the button that you want to go to this point and some third party service will automatically coordinate Uber, bus, as well as this Uber in order to make your entire transaction seamless, okay? So there is no, uh, so you don't have to call three different services and wait for the bus here and wait for the Uber here, okay? Everything is going to be done automatically. This service has been in, I think Helsinki, Finland for some time now and the company is doing very well. So uh, if those of you who are enterprising can think about developing this business model for other countries as well. Um, but here is the problem, okay? Uh, if, you want, if you want this service to become a reality, what it wants is that this third party company, I, I, what should I name this company? Let me call this company C1. Uh, okay, so you want this company C1, Uber, and bus, okay, all these three to come together, form a coalition, and then manage all the payments, negotiate what the payment is going to be, maybe there is some amount of bargaining, uh, and then figure out how exactly are they going to share the cost. So the cost is, so what are you going to pay? You're going to go, you're going to pay this company C1, going from point A to point B, but then C1 wants some amount of money as revenue and then we'll pass on something to Uber as well as the bus service company. Okay, so, so the idea of cooperative game is to figure out whether or not to form a group and if you indeed form a group, 
how should the payments be divided among yourself okay among that among the set of people who are in that group okay so a taxi company let's say there is an uber and a taxi company but the taxi company doesn't want to be in this particular coalition okay they want to stay out of it because they think that they can make more money by just serving individual customers okay so so how would you figure out which coalitions are going to be formed in this particular city and which coalition will not be formed so that's the that's the topic uh, that we are going to study in cooperative game theory and, and i feel that this is a very important topic uh, for the future uh, and and i know that many cities like the government agencies within cities are interested in this topic and when autonomous cars become a reality the first application will be in developing multimodal transportation network okay so so you should pay close attention to uh, the research happening in this field uh, my my hunch is or my prediction is after 20 years that topic is going to be a hot research topic maybe not 20 years 10 years okay so it's a good problem to study so we have so the idea is players can get into binding agreement to cooperate okay and this 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 uh getting into binding agreement agreement is completely up to the player to decide okay so that's why it's it's a game problem there are also something called teams in which every player has the same cost function or the same utility function okay so that's different from cooperative games okay in teams people have agreed to cooperate with each other by their own volition and they have the same objective function whereas in this case they may not have the same objective function but they still want to cooperate among each other for their selfish reasons okay they might earn more money if they cooperate rather than if they run their services individually uh how can i give you an example so a family is a team okay they have the same cost function they all cooperate with each other out of their own volition but if you look at this particular system they are not a team they are into binding agreements with cooperate to cooperate with each other and therefore it's a cooperative game so they are very different ideas sometimes people confuse between a team and a cooperative game i don't want you guys to confuse between them so there are four essential elements of a cooperative game you have n which is the set of players and then you have s which is a subset of n is a coalition and then you have v which maps two raised to n which is the power set of uh, n to r it's a coalitional function and you can think about it in this way v of s equals to money that coalition s can earn by cooperating and then third is transferable utility okay so i want to spend a little bit time on transferable utility and the fourth element is v of s does not depend on n 
minus s. And on the group n minus s. So those are the four essential elements uh, ab upon which uh, which we'll be uh, assuming as a background for whatever we are going to discuss. Okay, so you have a set of players, you have a coalition function which decide, which given any coalition or a group of players S, it tells you exactly how much money they can earn by cooperating and it is transferable utility which means that if I earn $10 or you earn $10, it's still $10, okay, there's no difference. Uh, I want to contrast this with an extreme example if there is a homeless person and Bill Gates, the $10, the worth of $10 to a homeless person and Bill Gates is not the same. Okay, it's very, very different. Uh, but in this case, we are going to assume that it's a transferable utility, so $10 is $10 for everyone. Okay, they don't really value it any differently uh, than each other. There are, of course, games with non-transferable utility, and this is something that you had studied, not studied, but you probably had written any an answer in the first assignment, first question, when I told you how a small cost to a city can improve the lives of the people, right? So that's the case of non-transferable utility because the amount of money that the city has to spend is very small, but the benefit to the people is much, much higher than what the cost is, okay? Cost to the city is. So that's an example of non-transferable utility. Uh, so. The theory of cooperative games with non-transferable utility, you have very few papers on that because it's not, it's a very difficult problem to solve. Uh, so, so, so we'll concentrate mostly on transferable utility problem where everything will be measured in terms of money or dollar amount, which remains the same no matter who gets that amount. And the fourth uh, point is uh, that the value that the group S can create does not really depend on the group N minus S. Uh, it's a fairly strong assumption uh, because if you, let's say, let's take the example of multimodal transportation and let's assume that you have four players, Uber, so in the multimodal transportation you have N equals taxi, Uber, uh, bus, and train okay and so what I'm saying is what if uber bus and train they form a group okay, and they create some value, it doesn't matter uh, it doesn't depend on what's going to happen to taxi and same thing the value to the taxi so taxi says I'm going to stay out of this particular group then the value that the taxi is going to create does not depend on the fact that these three organizations have joined hands and are providing a better service to the individuals. Again, this is not the case in many situations, but, uh, uh, but we, won't, we won't assume that. Uh, so, so as you can see, that is not the case here, but we will not consider that case. We'll consider this case where Vs does not depend on the group N minus S. Okay, any question about the assumptions or the model? Yes. So the transfer you give is something like the valuation that we discussed. Value that we discussed? Yeah, what? So, so in one of those uh, questions where you were talking about when you have an auction, land for an auction, the valuation of that land will be different for different players. Correct. So when we talk about non transferable utility, it offers different value to different players. So $10 might not be the same. Correct, price. correct. Yeah. Uh, 
you know but there is a difference in that so your point is that i have a piece of land and different people are going to value that piece of land differently uh, that's different from this transferable utility uh, see the reason why different people will value a piece of land differently is because somebody might want to build a shopping complex on it so he, his value is going to be higher somebody wants to build a home and therefore his value is going to be lower okay uh, in this case transferable utility means let's say i have 100 dollars that i want to divide between bill gates and a homeless person okay so so if i say that you know everybody is equal so we'll give 50 dollars to bill gates and 50 dollars to this homeless person uh, in some sense i mean if you think of money as an absolute term then it's a transferable utility okay this 100 dollar so if dollar 50 uh, was given to bill gates and dollar 50 was given to this homeless person it's a transferable utility if bill gates uh, if i say that you know i'm going to take 50 dollars from bill gates and i'm going to give 100 dollars to the homeless person okay then of course the utility of bill gates will reduce by 50 dollars okay um, but if you think in terms of value Bill Gates will say that, you know, I don't care about this $50, give it to the homeless person. Okay, so, uh, so, so think, of, think of transferable utility just as money, and everybody values money equally. Okay, there's no person who has more value for money than the other person. I mean, this is kind of an extreme case where one person doesn't value $50 as much as the other person would. So the valuation in auction and the transferable utility here, they are different concepts. Um, yeah. Yes. Second, like V, uh, the function V, uh, you say it's the money S can earn. Right? Yeah. Is it like in a uh, way that they can secure that amount of money? Or like they can secure that like amount of money. Yeah. Right, right. So we'll, let's see some examples, okay? So there is examples, one, is the profit profit game and the idea is as follows uh, there is an engineer there is a business person and then there is a marketing guy okay and we have v of phi which is nobody is in the coalition then it's equal to zero V of E, which is the value that engineer, so this might be the salary of the engineer, is 170 V of B equals to 180 V of M equals to 150. Okay, this, this is all the, the, the salary that an engineer alone is making, a business person alone is making, a marketing person alone is making. And then, you know, they... They're sitting on a coffee table and then they are deciding some new engineering idea that can be transformed into a startup. Okay, so if E and B join hands together, they can earn a total of $380. Similarly, if V of B and M, so these two people join, you know, technically I should have the set notation here but I'm going to remove the notation. I mean, I'm not going to follow it. Uh, so if, if the business person and the marketing person, they, sh they join together, they can earn a total of $360. V of E and M is going to be $300 and V of all is going to be five sixty dollars. Okay, so if all three of them join hands, they are going to earn a total of five sixty dollars. So let's analyze this uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Should engineer and the businessman, uh, the business person, should they join hand and form a coalition? So let's see if they are individually, they can earn one seventy plus one eighty. So that's three fifty dollars, right? But if they join hands, they can earn a total of $380, which is strictly greater than $350. So they have a $30 extra that they can share among themselves uh, after coming to an agreement, and they'll be better off in creating a, a coalition. The same thing happens here. 
So B and M individually they can earn a 330, a total of 330 dollars, but together they can earn 360 dollars. So they again have 30 dollars extra that they can create, they can share among themselves. Now look at engineering and marketing person. So together, I mean, uh, if they earn individually, they earn 170 plus 150, so that's 320 dollars. But now if they join hands together, they can only earn $300. So probably forming this coalition is not useful, okay? And then if all of them join together, the total is $500, but they can earn $560 together. So now they have $60 to share, okay? So most likely, if this is the condition, if this is the case, all of them will join hands together they individually, each of them will be better off if they can at least get this much money. And then they have $60 extra to uh, divide among themselves in any way they want, okay? So the business person will say, you know what? I am the one who earns maximum money, okay? And so if I join this group, I'm gonna create the maximum value. And so I should get the entire $60 extra, okay? But then the engineer will say, you know what? I'm designing the product, I'm doing the hard work. I should get the entire $60, okay, and so on, okay? So this negotiation will go on, and in the end, they'll come to an agreement. And so the question that we ask in cooperative game is whether a coalition will be formed or not. So in this case, we clearly see that one coalition seems to be very good uh, for everyone. But the second question that coalition game would ask is how much, how should they share this money uh, $560 among themselves, okay? So we'll study the theory of how the money should be shared uh, in a bit. Any question about this? <coughs> okay, yeah. Actually, I have an like, example for this. Hmm. So, uh, like, I guess two or three years ago, uh, the elections in Turkey mm -hmm. did not have a, a result that one party could form a government. By okay. Itself. So they were like doing this math of which parties should collate. That's and right. And they were trying to share the 550 seats right. in the parliament. So like the example you right. is... Right. In, yeah, I mean there is a lot of uh, political applications <laughs> of cooperative game. Whether two different parties with different ideologies will shake hands and form a government in the, in the center or in the states or not. Okay, I, I don't think uh, US has that kind of... Uh, uh, that kind of governance, but many other countries do, and and uh, yeah, you can. You see, very competing. You know, people who would curse at each other <laughs> in one year would form a government in some other year. It's it's very funny. Okay. Now there is a number two, which is a cost game. Okay. So profit game. So this. This V of S is the profit, but when I say a cost game, you should just assume that that's negative of V of S. What was the cost game? Oh yeah, the cost game. Okay, so three countries, country one, two, and three, they have to decide on whether to invest in building a local power plant or we can build a very big power plant, okay? All three of them can pool in these sources, build a very big power plant that can supply electricity to all three countries, okay? So what happens in this case? No one builds any power plant, the cost is zero. If country one builds a power plant in its own country, in its own, uh, 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 in its own land, the cost is $70, C2 is $80, C3 is $90, okay? So that's the cost of, cost of uh, installing a generator in country three for meeting the needs of country three. And then you can have C of one comma two as 100, C of 2 comma 3 equals 100, C of 3 comma 1 equals 130, and C of all equals 180. Okay, so again, 
you will notice that if all three countries join hands together and create a much bigger and efficient generator, the total cost is going to reduce. So what is 70 plus 80? That's 150 plus 90, 240 dollars. So if each of them build a power plant individually, it costs, costs 240 dollars. But if all of them join hands together, it costs only 180 dollars. So it makes sense for this country, for all three countries to join together and build a power plant and they'll save $60 in total. But guess what? Country one and two will say, you know what? Uh, if we join hands together, uh, our power plant is only going to cost $100, right? And so, uh, so in this case, let's say they say that they, they are going to share the cost uh, equally so each country will pay 60 60 dollars but then one and two will say you know what if we just join hands together each of us will only pay 50 dollars so why should i join country number 3 and form a coalition but then two and three will say you know what we both can form a coalition and can uh, divide the cost equally and leave the one leave this player one out of the game um, okay so so that's also a possible coalition um, and so on. Okay, so you can argue what kind of coalitions will be formed in this kind of this kind of a game. So that's a cost game. Yeah. Correct. So usually they played it before they would have had some bias regarding the cooperative with other players. Right. So, so, so then you are talking about dynamic cooperative game or maybe even repeated cooperative game or maybe uh, uh, you know going all the way to infinity. Uh, I don't think those games are very well studied. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you think about a business uh, or a startup, you know, five people come together, create a startup, then they get some money. Uh, if it was just a static game, they will divide the money at the end of the year and they'll go in each of their own way, own way, right? But if you think of it as a long-term venture, then they need to save some money for the future, which will be invested into hiring more talent and thereby increase the value of the company and so on. Okay, so I don't know whether those kind of uh, topics have been studied very well or not. I haven't seen many papers on dynamic cooperative game theory. Then there are simple games. Um, in this case, V of S is equal to zero or one for all S in N, S subset of N. And these are typically used in committee votes. Okay, so if majority have voted, then the value is equal to one, and if none of, if majority haven't voted, uh, then the value is going to be zero. So this is, for instance, done in UN Security Council, where V of S is equal to one. If S is greater than or equal to 9, so 9 members vote yes, okay, so they form a coalition. By voting yes, you form a coalition of yes people. So if the number of people who have said yes to a security matter is greater than 9 and all 5 permanent members are in S. Okay, so all five permanent members have to say yes, okay, in order for a security, uh, uh, in order for an order to be passed. And it's equal to zero otherwise. So if any of the permanent members veto, then that, uh, uh, that order will not be passed because of the veto power of permanent members. Then we have weighted. majority games 
where each vote has uh, has some weight okay so it's equal to 1 if summation of wi is greater than equal to some some quota q and 0 otherwise okay so each vote matters so if person i says yes then the weight is wi so in a classroom setting for instance uh, the faculty has all the weight and the students have no weight okay so if i want to have a final exam i will have a final exam if i don't want to have a final exam there will be no final exam okay you don't have a say in it your weights are equal to zero but but guess what even in a classroom setting okay even though i have all the weight and you have none uh, we still formed a coalition right we are uh, 10 or 12 or 13 people taking this class uh, for the entire semester in fact you can think of it this way the reason why you took this class is because you feel it's beneficial to you or maybe someone recommended to take this class <laughs> so uh, so yeah then you have spanning tree game You know, uh, the thing is, these these topics are deeply ingrained in economics. So, all I'm giving is economic examples. But maybe some of you in your research can come up with more engineering examples in uh, communication, wireless network, or uh, uh, some other uh, some other field. So, in spanning tree game, you have a source. So it's a it's it's a graphical game. and you have a source and then you have players okay so this is node 1 node 2 node 3 node 4 node 5 6 okay and each of them have a cost let's say c i j or c 2 3 c 2 s C1S and so on. Okay. Uh, and the cost C of S is the minimum cost to connect. So you solve an optimization problem in order to find C of S. Okay. So you so you want to what is it? The minimum cost to connect all i in s to source to the source okay so what's the economic example well you have city 1 city 2 city 3 and then there is some drainage uh, that the cities need to uh, connect to in order to draw all the um, dirty water uh, you can have multiple options you can build a pipeline from 1 to 2 and then 2 to D and you can build another pipeline from 3 to D and you can uh, you can route the sewage in this fashion and that might be the minimum cost okay overall minimum cost but then each of these city so let's say this is the plan then each of these cities have to decide how much are they going to pay for this overall project okay so in order to find c of s you need to solve an optimization problem figure out what c of s is and then you can uh, figure out which coalition is possible which coalition is not possible in this case the reason why it's called spanning tree is because the final result would look like a tree okay with this this as a source and then you will have leaves
Has anyone seen this kind of scenario in communication network? No? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen any game of this sort. Uh, then there is cost sharing. And we will talk about it in greater detail uh, after Thanksgiving. Uh, and the idea is uh, how to share cost for common facility. Okay, so there is a single runway. Okay, the runway could be half a mile long, it could be two miles long. Um, of course, building a half a mile runway is much cheaper, uh, but uh, but it can only carry very small planes. Okay, instead if you build a longer runway, then it can carry large planes. But then if you do build a longer runway, how would you share the cost of the runway? How are you going to tax the air, airline company? So the airlines that have bigger aircrafts, they will be, they'll have to pay more money for using the same, same runway as compared to smaller aircrafts. Okay, so, um, so that's the cost sharing game. So you build one facility, okay, and once you have built the facility, how are you going to divide the cost among people uh, based on the inherent uh, uh, properties of that particular person. Well, in this case, it's aircraft, so aircraft is not a person, but you get the idea, right? So that's the cost sharing game. <coughs> uh, some people have, well, uh, we will talk about mechanism design in cost sharing game uh, after Thanksgiving, so uh, we'll touch this topic again after some time. Okay, so those are the examples of uh, examples of cooperative games that you can think about, and of course there are many more examples, but we won't go through it. Okay, any questions so far? No. Okay, so next I want to talk about the notion of strategic equivalence. and NB and NW are strategically equivalent if, if and only if W of S equals to A, V of S plus summation BI I in S. Uh, A has to be greater than zero and B I can be any number in R. Okay, so the strategic equivalence says if you consider a cooperative game V and you figure out what are the coalition, how should the payment be divided, if there is any other game W that can be formed in this fashion, all you have to do is scale the payments and add or subtract payments in an appropriate way. Uh, and that will be an equilibrium in the new game. Okay, this is very similar to uh, the strategic equivalence uh, definition that we have studied for uh, non-cooperative games. The reason why strategic equivalence is important is because you can transform any game, any cooperative game with value functions uh, given by, not the value function, coalition function given by V. Uh, you can determine or you can come up with another strategically equivalent game where the coalition functions take only two values, zero or one, or zero or minus one, or zero or zero, okay? So that's possible. So in some sense, if you, if you decide to 
analyze a cooperative game in the future and you take the coalition function to be only zeros consisting of zeros or ones or zeros or minus ones, uh, you shouldn't feel sad about it because most likely any other coalitional game can be mapped to the original game that you have studied. And then I want to, so that's one topic. Then the next topic is uh, families special. Families of cooperative games. So you have super additive. where V S plus V T is less than equal to V S union T for all S T subset of N. I think S and T needs to be disjoint as well. Let me just check. Yeah, disjoint. So S intersection T is a null set. Okay, so S and T are disjoint sets. If you form a coalition of the agents in or players in S and T, then the total value can only increase. Okay, it cannot. It it's the sum total of the individual value. So typically, of course, in a uh, you know the engineer and business person example that we saw, well, it didn't really have the super additive property because if you took the engineer and the marketing guy, the total value was not equal to the sum of their individual value. Okay, but if you increase that number to, I don't know, 350 or 340, then it becomes a super additive game. Okay, so if both of them come together, they can create a much higher value and get a better payoff in the end. And then the other is, monotonic monotonicity monotonic cooperative game what this means is if s is a subset of t then v of s is less than equal to v of t okay so of course uh, super additive games are monotonic but the other way doesn't go uh, doesn't hold. So in particular, in super additive game, there is always a push to form a grand coalition. Okay, so what is a grand coalition where all the players group together to form a single coalition? Okay, so so grand coalition all players player join all players form a single group cooperate to form a single group You know, those of you who might have uh, read about the history of human civilization, uh, it's very interesting to note that earlier, there used to be multiple tribes of 15, 20 people. They would fight each other, kill each other. Okay, that was the normal thing to do. And then as things became more complicated, as they started forming societies through agriculture and through uh, animal rearing, they had to start, the tribes had to start cooperating with each other and give birth to nations, okay, so that becomes a grand coalition, okay, all the people, all the tribes come together and build an entire nation and then they uh, are much better off than individual tribes, okay, because any external aggressor will come, kill all the members of the tribe and take all their property, so that wasn't a good thing, so they formed a grand coalition 
and then they started having large armies and so on okay and then we know what happened in the history right we had world war 2 and 1 and uh, i don't know how many other wars we had uh, that was so the reason why we had so many wars is because uh, because they could form grand coalition and fight each other Okay, so so far we have given uh, examples of uh, cooperative games. Uh, we talked about some special families of cooperative games and we talked about strategic equivalence among two different cooperative games. Um, now I want to jump on to solution concepts. Okay, so the solution concept is how much should each person receive? Um, if they join a coalition. Solution concept. In some sense, uh, the solution, I mean, uh, th this, this topic of cooperative games was actually uh, studied by Von Neumann and Morgenstern in their book on game theory. Uh, but of course the theory was developed much after that. I mean they studied a little bit of it but then uh, later on a lot more was done in the field of cooperative game and uh, Nash also had some contribution to these solution concepts. So to, to begin this uh, topic let's consider B which is the partition of the set N. Okay. All of you know what partition is? Okay. Partition. Everyone knows what a partition is? No? Okay. So we have N. We have S1, SK. Uh, so these are all subsets of N. These are all disjoint, so SI intersection SJ is null set for I not equal to J. So that's one property. And the second property is union of SI, I equals 1 to K is actually equals to N. Okay, so that's a partition. So, so then S1 to SK is called a partition of set N. So, uh, for instance, if n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4, then a probable partition is 1, 2, 2, and 4, and then 3. Okay, so that's a partition of the set n. So the first property, so what should be the properties of the optimal solution? So we want to define, so an efficient I see. Uh, what we need to, so wait a second. So the goal is find x in Rn where xi is the payment to 
layer i. Okay, so we have partitioned the set. We so remember in this case, uh, what has happened is we we have already partitioned the set n, which means we have already divided people into various groups. Okay, so we haven't yet studied. I mean, in this case, we are not studying the entire topic of coalition formation so far. Okay, we have decided the set of people. We see that okay, fine. Uh, these people are willing to cooperate, so let's put them in one group, and then rest of them, allow them to form their own group. So some partition of the entire set N has been, has been done through an organic process or by uh, someone else making this partition and dividing people into several groups. Now the question is, how should the payment, so each group, of course, is creating some value V of SI, and the question is, how should this value be distributed among the group members? So what should those uh, payment scheme uh, satisfy? So we have the first definition, which is an efficiency condition, efficient coalition. It means that summation of xi i in S should be equals to V of S for all S in B. Okay. So the engineer and the business person, they have, uh, they have formed a coalition and they are earning a total of $360, how should they divide <coughs> the payment so that the sum of the two payments should be exactly equal to $360, okay? Nothing more, nothing less. They're not saving anything for the future. So that's an efficient coalition, and this property is also known as budget balanced. Okay, what that means is the budget is balanced. The amount of payment is the same as the total value, the total money of money earned by the coalition. Okay, any question about this definition? No. Individually rational. So what do you think should the individual rationality say? Ratio. See, there is there is there is some money that I can earn on my own. Okay, that's my VI. Okay. So what should individually rational? What would an what would a rational player do in this particular case? When will he accept a payment XI? V of I, right? So we want XI to be greater than V of I for all I in. N. Okay, so these are two properties that the uh, the payment should satisfy. No, because these players are all. Uh, Yeah, yes, I think, I think, okay, so his point is, is there something called group rationality, which means that the two groups can join hands together and maybe form a larger group and thereby earn more profit. Uh -huh. Right, 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 correct, correct, okay. So his point is, if one person from S1 and one person from S2 join hands together, thereby having a better payoff. Well, in this case, the partition is already done, so they are in some sort of binding agreement to cooperate with each other. But what you are really asking is stability of a coalition, and that's something we have not yet covered in this, uh, so far. If they want partition, they cannot form a group by themselves, right? So yeah, once they have partition, they cannot form a... So see, all these things that you are talking about appears in dynamic cooperative game theory. It wouldn't appear in a static. I mean, 
individual rationality also requires the partition to be reformed, right? Because no, I mean you like being individual rational. You compare the case where I form a group by myself, and right? Then that's against the partition because we have already partitioned this. Okay. Right, right. So, uh, so it's also breaking the initial partition. Uh, uh, no. Um, so his point is, uh, in some sense, this player I is saying that you know, if I just form a group of my own, like I'm the only person in the group, then I should, then what I get is v of i, and so there is some sort of uh, uh, disturbance. disturbance in the partition. Well, you know, this there is no disturbance in the partition. This is just somebody has to decide the payment vector. And they need to make sure that the payment vector is such that it satisfies some uh, some assumption, which uh, which seems reasonable. Okay, so we are not really breaking the part breaking the partition here in any sense. All we are saying is we want the we want the payment vector to satisfy some reasonable assumption, and this is one reasonable assumption. Well, yeah, but in this case, the partition has already been formed. So, when we in, so what I'm going to introduce uh, the solution method will say that sometimes the solution is empty, which means there is no solution, which means some of these conditions are violated. Okay, and therefore there is no solution. So that's the solution concept called imputation. So the definition of imputation of B Is it imputation of or imputation for? Yeah, so imputation for, not of. So so we have n v is the coalitional game we have b as coalitional structure Okay, which is a partition of the set, and x in R n is imputation for coalitional structure B. If x is efficient x is efficient and x is individually rational. Okay, so that's the definition of uh, imputation. Now, a lot of problems with this. Uh, there can be many solutions or there can be no solution. Okay? Both of them are bad, right? In Nash equilibrium, we said, well, there are many Nash equilibrium. Then we had to start studying refinements of Nash equilibrium. Which Nash equilibrium is more plausible to happen in reality than other Nash equilibrium? Uh, so in this case, we came up with the first solution. Somebody divided the group 
of players into multiple uh, into somebody partitioned the group of players uh, formed a coalitional structure and then you designed a payment mechanism uh, which satisfies some plausible so so some satisfies some reasonable uh, reasonable assumptions which is it should be an efficient coalition and individually rational and what you see is well there are too many solutions so let's let's look at this uh, set of inequalities for the the profit game that we talked about okay so i have my x in so i want to give it uh yes so let's say x of bv is the set of imputation so for the profit game we have x of bv is given by let's say my so i have to define what b is so let's look at the profit game what were my players so n was engineer businessman and the marketing guy and let's say i'm going to form this coalition structure engineer and the marketing guy forms group 1 remember this was non plausible okay so we want to show that the set of imputation is empty for this particular case and the business guy is on his own okay so we have our x of so so x bv satisfies x e greater than equal to 170 x b greater than equal to 180 x m greater than equal to 150 and then we want x of e plus x of m should be equal to 300 okay there is no such vector x that can satisfy all these three conditions so this is empty so x is empty okay any question on this one no so the set of imputations is empty now one could argue that you know what let's form a grand coalition okay so where should i write maybe here no that's not enough space okay so someone someone said that you know what let's not partition it let's form a grand coalition so my b is actually equals to n well b equals to n which is e m and b in which case it has to satisfy x e greater than equals to 170 x p greater than equal to 180 and x m greater than equal to 150 and x e plus x b plus x m should be equal to 
560, 560, yeah, okay. And in this case, x is, x is huge, okay. It's not like there is one, two, or five, or ten solution. There is infinitely many solution. Okay, so that's not a very good property of a solution. So I don't like this solution concept. Okay, so I don't like this solution, so I need to come up with something else, some other solution method for uh, such a game, for a cooperative game. So let's uh, concentrate on the case when you have a grand coalition. So B is, so let's first concentrate. So case B is equal to N. Okay, so it's a grand coalition. So in this case, I think this in this case you have a group rationality, okay, in some sense. So here is the idea. So an imputation x in Rn is an imputation. So x is coalitionally rational. if or if and only if so this is a definition i have summation of i in x xi should be greater than equal to b of s for every s in the subset of n Okay. So this is in some sense telling you what is rational for a group to do. So if, uh, if sum of xi for some i in s, so you pick a set s and what you see, well let's say you observe that sum of xi for i in s is strictly less than v of s, then in that case those players will form a group and thereby have a larger value to themselves, they can get a better payoff. Okay, so for a, for a group of people, uh, this imputation x would be coalitionally rational if this additional constraint is also satisfied in this case. So that reduces the size of the imputation x for the cases where b is a grand coalition. Okay, so you're reducing the size. So you came, so you came, so you designed imputation which sort of made sense, uh, but it leads to a problem that the set of imputation is huge, so you want to somehow reduce the size. So you consider a specific case of grand coalition, and by adding this additional inequality constraint, you have made it, uh, made it smaller. So that's called the core. Okay, so that's the definition of a core. So x in Rn is in core if and only if x belongs to C of n comma v, which is equal to 
x in capital X in comma V such that x is coalitionally rational. Okay, and so far, of course, we are writing about the values, but if it was a cost function, right, and it was a cost game, then you would change the sign and write C of S here. Okay, so in the cost, the goal of every player is to pay as little cost as possible uh, if they form a coalition. Okay. So how do we know whether a grand coalition will be formed or not? Okay. So if a grand coalition is formed, it means that there should be a payment which satisfies all the conditions, okay? All the equality and inequality conditions. So let's ask this question based on this concept of core. So the question is, will there be, so given N and V, will there be grand coalition? Okay, that's the question. So in order to prove that, let's say my n was 1, 2, and 3. And so my vector x is in R3. What should it, uh, what should it satisfy? What are the set of inequalities it should satisfy? Uh, for for that vector x uh, to be in the core. So well, you have to have several set of inequalities. So x1 plus x2 plus x3 should be equals to v1, 2, 3. That's the budget balance constraint. And then we have all the coalitional rational constraint, so this is the budget balance or efficient and then we have x1 plus x2 should be greater than v of 1 comma 2 and x1 plus plus x3 is greater than p1, 3, and then x2 plus x3 should be greater than v2, 3, and what else? xi greater than vi. So these three are, yeah, coalitionally rational constraint. And this is individual rational. Okay. So we want uh, a vector x to satisfy all these set of inequalities. If we can find such a vector, then it's very likely that a ground, uh, that a grand coalition will be formed. Okay, so all the players will form a single group and they'll share the profit together. Okay. So the question is, can we check 
is it easy to check <coughs> that uh, given these values v1 sorry v given these values for different subsets is it easy to check for these conditions well it turns out uh, yes there is a method uh, and i want to give tell you what that method is okay so Well, I won't actually tell you what the method is today, but I'll give you an idea of what is what we are going to do in the next class. So first of all, each of xi has to be greater than vi, but sum of xi should be equal to v123. So we have v1 plus v 2 plus v3 is less than equal to v1, 2, 3. Right? That's an obvious condition that must be satisfied. Okay? What if I sum all these three things together, all these three equations together? Okay? That will give me another condition. So I have v. 1, 2 plus v, 2, 3 plus v, 3, 1 should be less than equal to 2 v, 1, 2, 3. Right? <coughs> so I can take these two on the other side and I can make it one half, one half, and one half. Okay. What else do I need to know? Oh yeah, uh, let's look at this one, x1 plus x2 and plus x3. So I have v of 1, 2 plus v of 3 is less than or equal to v of 1, 2, 3, right? And so on. You can keep going on and on and you can write several set of inequalities that doesn't really depend on each of these xi's, okay? What you are checking is whether such an xi would exist that satisfy all these inequalities or not, but in order to do that, you don't need to find an individual value of x. All you need to check is these set of inequalities, okay? And there are many such inequalities that you can write. And all you have to check is whether the value function, oh, sorry, the coalition function v satisfies those set of inequalities or not, okay? And if all those inequalities are satisfied, it is highly likely that a grand coalition will be formed. Why? Because you can divide a pi in such a manner that it will satisfy these constraints. Okay? So we'll study uh, the theorem uh, named after Shapley and who's the other person? Bon Bondareva. So Bondareva Shapley theorem. So we'll study that theorem, which tells us how exactly to check for uh, these conditions. So we'll meet on Tuesday. <laughs>